How to change a car's color in Photoshop, a Vectormade.com tutorial. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another Vectormade.com tutorial. Today we want to talk about how do you change the color of a car, or really anything else, in Photoshop. Let's jump on in. So, first thing I'm going to do is grab my polygonal lasso tool up here and just zoom in to a decent starting spot. It doesn't really matter where. Um, and I zoom in with Alt just using the uh, mouse wheel to scroll in and out. And then if you need to go left and right, you just use Control to go left and right, okay? It's real simple like that. And then of course, without anything, you're going up and down. So up, down, Control, left, right, Alt, in and out. That's how you get around quickly in any of these programs. So, um, you know, just click somewhere and start dragging this around and you're just going to be making this curve as best you can. It's a straight line tool. There is no curve to the polygonal lasso tool, but I find that if you just add a few more clicks, you can kind of make it work because later on we are going to feather this and that will make up for any of the um, jagged edges that we might have when we're done. It doesn't even have to be perfect. It can just be uh, like you can even come into some of this black. It's not going to matter. I don't have to be that perfect on this stuff. Um, just come in like that. Now right here it would matter. I need to be as close to this as possible. And basically I won't do this whole thing. I'll, I'll, I'll load up something that I've already done so you guys can see the full uh, selection that I've made. But, um, you know, finishing it off, you would just come over here and um, you'll get this little circle and that lets you know you've got a completed selection and there you see the marching ants going around like that and then all you'd want to do is go back after this has all been selected the red has been fully selected you'll want to come in here and take off any of the parts you don't want so you hold alt to get the negative tool of your lasso uh, tool the negative version i should say and that will deselect anything that you put inside of it and same thing circle at the end and let you know that you're finished and voila this is selected, this is not. So let me go ahead and deselect that and I will load up my selection, which was here and I named it car and just say, okay. So that's my selection. You can see I took out the windows. I took out this little part here, none of the uh, little blinker lights. And then I found this little thing over here. I got rid of that too. So, you know, everything that's red is selected. Everything that's not is not. What I would do now is hit uh, Control, Alt, and R to bring up your Refine Edge tool. And you can change this opacity if you want, maybe bump that up to maybe even 100 or you know 90 or something, 95, that's good. And then I would do feathering on at least one and maybe a 25% contrast and maybe do a minus five on Shift Edge. This is gonna depend on the image you're using. So I'm just looking at it going, look, is it a little bit fuzzy? It's a little bit fuzzy. And that's kind of what you want. You don't want it too fuzzy. Like if I bump this up to 10 or 11, that's way too fuzzy, right? No, that's not gonna work. But one is good and I'll show you, if it's zero, it's not good at all. It's gonna look really jagged. So you don't want that jaggedy, you know, pixelated look. I want a nice soft edge, but this contrast, keeps it from being too soft. So if I just bump that up to 50, it's a little bit too hard. 35, okay, maybe 35. 25, eh. actually, I think I like 35 better. Maybe 30, split the difference, boom. All right, and then the shift edge, you can either do 25 up, minus 25 down, maybe minus 10, minus five is good. Maybe even leaving this one at zero would be fine, but let's do minus five on this one. But those are some values that I use often on, uh, on those values there. Um, on those sliders. So let's hit OK. We've got that selection still. It's been refined. What I would do now is create a layer from that selection. So hit Control J to create a new layer. I'll just show you what I've made. There it is. Next thing I would do is come up to Image Adjustments and Desaturate. You can also do Shift Control U, but I tend to forget that one. It's a little longer. <laughs> so Desaturate, boom. You have all the highs, you have the lows, you have no color. And that's what we want. We just want all the the heights and the lows of, of the color that was in it, but none of the color that was there, if that makes any sense. So we're going to add, by double-clicking on that layer, 
go to layer style, go to color overlay, and I've already got overlay selected with yellow. And as you can see, boom, it just changed the color of the car, right? So I hit okay, toggle, it's, this is my yellow layer, this is the original, original looks red, now it looks yellow. If you wanna change that, you can come into your color, go in here and pick a different color. Let's say we wanna do, well there's green, um, or we could do blue. I think blue looks really good. Um, another thing you may want to do, a couple other things actually, let's do another layer that's the exact same one. I just made a copy, Control J. I'm gonna get rid of the effects. So I just grabbed on that and drug it down to the trash bin over here. So now I'm left with, again, this sort of gray highs and lows layer. And we can come double click on it and change the blend mode to maybe soft light and hit OK. Now let me show you what that did because it's subtle. There's before, there's after. See, soft light just kind of gives it a little more contrast. Brightens the brights, deepens the darks, still keeps it blue, keeps a lot of the original feel of it, but it just makes it look a little glossier. And another thing you might do, and this is going to depend on the color, um, you might come up to layer and do new adjustment layer and hit levels. And let's hit OK. And maybe we put those down here. So this is my blue color. This is more of my soft light shading layer. This is my blue layer. Um, let's make a, I'm right clicking to do a clipping mask so that this is only applying to my blue. And then I might drag these sliders in a little bit to see how that changes things. So if you want a little bit deeper, richer, darker blue, you might drag these sliders in like so, maybe pull up the darks a little bit more. Um, if you wanted a little bit brighter, you might do something like that. I think that's too bright, but maybe the mid-tones you know, come this way to allow for the less of a dark tone to be there, but I kind of like it on this end. I think I like a midnight blue looks really pretty sweet, actually. So you might do something like that. Um, now what this might do, though, is if you change your color, let's go back in here and do color overlay again. Let's change it back to, oh, let's see, yellow. There it is. That doesn't look as good, right? That looks kind of bad. So you might want to take the levels that you just made off for yellow and leave them on for blue. And you can always make another layer here that's blue and another one that's yellow and, and just do it that way. But that's how I would do it. It's very simple, very quick, and gives you good results at a, at a decent speed. There are other ways of doing this that maybe get you a little bit more um, accurate colors. But a lot of times I don't need to be terribly accurate. I just need a blue, a red, a yellow, something generic and so for me this is the best way to do it um, in those situations so hey leave a comment down below like subscribe uh, share my video and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one thanks